So hi, this is Carl Hassan. I want to talk to you about a mini tightrope technique for a Liz Frank injury. So we have a disruption of the second tarsal, metatarsal joint. And the idea is, is we need to reduce it. And why not use a suture button device that will actually allow for some sagittal plane motion and some forgiveness if you're off a little bit versus a screw that once you put it across, you're locked in that position. And so I'm going to make my first incision, which is just off the lateral border of the second metatarsal. I'll make my incision long enough so that I can obviously get my mini tie rope in. I'll take some scissors and I'll dissect down. So with the homan on the bottom of the metatarsal and the sen up on the top, this is the shaft of the metatarsal. And so I basically want to make sure I'm in the mid shaft of the second metatarsal, very close to its base. And then I'm just going to get it started on that cortex. So I'm going to angle so that I can come right out where my finger is. And then I'm going to look at it under x-ray. What I'm looking for is I'm looking to make sure that my pin is in the base of the second metatarsal and it's actually into the medial cuneiform. I'm then going to check a lateral because the one thing I want to make sure is I'm not going to be coming perfectly. So I want to make sure that where my pin exits, it's not going to be on the plantar surface of the medial cuneiform nor on the dorsal surface. And you'll see my pin's exiting right about the middle of the middle uh, cuneiform. So once I'm happy with that, I'm going to have to make an incision over my pin on the medial side, obviously, to place my tightrope. And once I'm convinced I'm against bone, I'm going to spread my scissors to convince myself that there's no soft tissue around the area. Sometimes I'll even go as far as just to spin my scissors all the way around the pin to convince myself that I'm not going to get the tibialis anterior. Then it becomes very, very simple for the reduction technique. So I'm literally going to take my 2-7 drill. I'm going to drill through the base, through the second, out. And then I can remove my pin. Now, this is the nice thing you could do. If you take the tip of your mini tightrope, as I slide it back, I'm being pushed out by the pin. And it's a nice way so you don't lose your hole and you're not struggling. Now, as you do this, you want to make sure the button, so you can see the button just before it's going to go through. I'm making sure there's tension on it so that it's going to pass quite easily with this technique. And I'm going to pass it until it comes out the other side. And then I'm going to make sure I grab the button. And I'm going to actually visualize and watch the button go right down onto the shaft of the second metatarsal. In the beginning, if you're not comfortable, you could see I'm pulling not on the button, but on the sutures themselves. With me holding tension on the button, I can even grab, I can pull a little bit, and my button is sitting down on the second metatarsal. This technique should allow this to completely suck down on its own, just like in a syndesmotic issue. So once I have it here, I'm going to take my button and I'm going to slide it down until I'm convinced that I'm on the bone. Now, the last thing you want to be able to do is as I'm going down, remember my soft tissues. I want to make sure that this button is going to go down. I know it's on the bone because I'm pushing down against the bone and my button's against it. So I'm comfortable that I'm down in there. Now I can actually put my hand grips on and we can pull. If you want to double check to make sure you've reduced it, you can check it under x-ray and you can convince yourself that you reduce. And actually, you can see you actually almost sucked down the second metatarsal in this arthritic foot. It's not only have you reduced it, but you've allowed for sagittal plane motion between the metatarsals. So you have, don't have a screw device in here that's locking up that second tarsal metatarsal area. Once this actually heals and then get back to functioning, it's a nice way to reduce and anatomically align the second tarsal metatarsal joint, but at the same time, allow, say, an athlete to have motion in the sagittal plane once they're healed and going back to normal. Nice way to reduce it without having to fix it later or remove hardware later.